Okay, in this video, I'm gonna talk about change of basis. So we're gonna take a look at um, how to, um, given a vector, how to convert that vector that lives in a non-standard basis and convert it to another non-standard basis. Um, so a lot of these ideas uh, that you're about to see um, kind of originated from uh, section 4.4 in, in the textbook that we're using. All right, so let's consider, right? Um, let's consider two bases. Okay. So let's call beta, let beta be a collection of basis vectors. So I'm gonna call those B1 and B2, okay? And C is going to be a collection of another set of non-standard bases. C1 and C2, okay. And these are obviously for a vector space. Such that B1, okay, so, so I said this vector can be expressed in terms of a linear combination of the vectors in this set. Okay, um, so specifically we're looking at, we have four types C1 plus C2. And for B2, we have minus six times C1 plus C2. So we're going to look at this tip. We're going to look at this specific example. And then uh, from there, we should be able to generalize something, okay? All right, suppose now, okay? Suppose that we have a vector X that is in our vector space V, right? V equal to three times V one, plus B2. And we want to basically find, we want to define this in terms of the vectors in, in the set, in our set C, okay? Now keep in mind, um, this right here, okay? This just means, okay, we have X, the vector x in terms of basis, right? Remember the weights is what this is, okay? So the weights being here is three and one. So those are the coefficients, three and one, okay? So all, that's all this means, okay? So that is x, right? The vector x in terms of these base of these beta vectors. And we want to find, right? so basically we want to find X in terms of this set. Okay, so again, we're working with a non-standard set here, right? So here's your vector. Is it a non, defined by a non-standard basis? Okay, right? Um, so it could be, you know, it could be a standard or non-standard, a non-standard basis. So, um, but the point is that you know we're taking this vector, okay, and we want to convert it into this set of bases, okay. All right. So how do we do that? Well, okay, we have to go back um, to the definition of the change of coordinates matrix. Okay, so X in terms of C is just defined to be, right, we have B1 in terms of C and B2 in terms of C, okay? And then, so this is going to be the change of coordinates matrix, okay? 
And this matrix is going to operate on this, this vector, right? This is the one that we want to convert into, we're going to go from beta into C, okay? So how do we, right, so how do we get that? Well, we just go back to what we have here. We have beta, right? We have these vectors, right? We know, right, we're given the specific linear combinations of those. So B1 in terms of C is going to be 4, 1, okay? 4 and 1 here. And the second vector, B, right, in terms of C, Again, that's just the weights, which is going to be minus six and one. So we can take that information, right, and um, and basically construct our change of coordinates matrix. Okay, so right, so here is four. Right, we have a one here. Okay, so that's going to go here. That's going to be in the first column of our change of coordinates matrix. And then we can do the same thing for the second column. So this is going to, we're going to have minus six here and one. Okay. So there you go. All right. So now we just need to operate on this. Okay. And so again, this just means that we have three times four one plus one times minus six one. So using the definition of using the formal definition of a matrix times vector, right? Okay. All right, so this is going to give us, right? This is just a scalar times a vector. That's going to be 12, three. And we're going to add just one of these. Okay. So we get our results, okay? Um, in this case, six and four. Okay. So that is X in terms of, of our set, of our set here, okay? All right, so nothing, you know, nothing surprising here, okay? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Right. So let's extend on this idea. All right, so let's get to the good stuff. So, uh, so the next thing we're going to present is a theorem, okay, that kind of um, ties this, basically ties this idea, okay, or ties all these ideas together. All right, so here's the theorem. Okay, let beta be a general set of, right? Let beta be a collection of vectors, a finite set, Finite collection of vectors. So let's say we have n vectors here, and this time we have C is going to be, uh, we have a collection of vectors for C. And both of these right, are going to be the basis of some vector space V. So this theorem is going to basically, we're, the bottom line is that we're generalizing um, the, uh, the, the, set, the first example that we did, okay? All right. So then, okay.
there is a unique n by n matrix i'm going to so basically that is the change of coordinates matrix that we um, that is discussed in section 4 okay so that is so Again, so this is just notation saying that we have a matrix and it's converting something from that's living in this basis and converting it into this basis. Okay, that's all that that's uh, that is the notation we use. Why they use this arrow? Uh, because there is something else. There's some other notation that uses an arrow in the other direction. Okay, so that's why they use this particular notation here. All right, so we have this okay, such that your vector x, right, defined in terms of c, right, is going to be equal to. So how do we get to this? Well, we take again, we take this matrix and multiply it on the vector that's living in, or that's defined in terms of the basis uh, of our basis vectors defined in, in beta, right. Right. So again, this is a general, this is basically a general general statement of what we did in section four. Okay. So the columns of this matrix They are basically the C coordinate vectors, okay. C coordinate vectors of the vectors in the basis beta. Which basically, this is just saying, right? So there's our, right? so here's our, here's our change of coordinates matrix, okay? So what this is saying is basically, um, this is constructed or made up of the basis vectors in terms of C. So the first column, this is being the first, right? The first vector, then we have the second vector, and so on. however many vectors we have in our set. In this case, we have n, n vectors here. Okay. So this is, this is our change of coordinates matrix. From beta to C. Right. So very right. The same is basically what we use in the in the first in the previous example we did. Okay. And we can see, right, because these are basis vectors. Remember, there's two requirements, right? One of the requirements is that they're they, the vectors have to be linearly independent. Okay. And because of that, uh, because these are linearly independent. Right, that means that this inverse exists. Okay, which tells us that we can go from C to beta to the inverse of this matrix. Okay. okay, so that's going to be the next thing. Okay, so I'm going to let's see. Right up here. OK. 
Okay, since the columns of this of this coordinates of this uh, change of coordinates matrix are literally independent. Then, okay. you know, if you if you're not good at writing, you know, sentence, if you don't have a good sentence structure, the saying is that if you go in math, by the time you finish, your sentence structure will be will be you know much improved. <laughs> okay. So, but anyway, it's just, it's just a, a little secret there. But um, all right. So then, okay. Right. So because the columns of this of this matrix are literally independent, therefore, um, going back to the inverse matrix theorem, okay, um, the inverse exists. So that means, right, if we have something defined in, in this, if we have a vector defined in, the, in terms of these basis vectors, then we can just use the inverse to get into to get the vector into this set. All right. Uh, oh, and this should be C, sorry. Okay, sorry, this should be C here. Okay, remember, we're taking the inverse. The inverse of this, all right? The inverse of this will be going from C to beta, right? So we're going from, right? So we're taking something from, from here, I'm sorry, from here to here, okay? Right? Before we were going from, we were going from beta, right? We're going from beta to C. Now this will take us, because we're doing the inverse, right? Okay, that is just, again, I can write that here. This is just going to be C to beta, okay? Right. And so then we have this. Okay. All right, so basically again, this is a matrix, right? That converts the vector living in this set and then going to this set, right? So again, this is just an extension of 4.4, where in that case, we're going from a, from a standard basis to a non-standard basis. Here, so instead of as non-standard, right? Instead of these, one of these being a non-standard, we just make the other one a, a, a non-standard, basically. Okay, so you're going from a non-standard to a non-standard, okay? As, um, unlike before, you're going from a standard to a non-standard, vice versa, okay? It's, but it's done to the same kind of um, technique using the idea of the change of coordinates matrix. All right, let's look at a, let's look at an example here now, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so let's say we're given uh, B1. Okay. And B2. Is this vector, all right, minus two, four. And we're given C1 and C2. All right, that's so those are given to us. Okay. 
Um, so we're going to let beta be a collection of vectors, namely B1 and B2. And C is going to be a collection of vectors of C1 and C2. Okay. All right, so those are going to, that's basically going to represent the bases and R2. Okay. So this is, so this serves as a basis in R2 and same thing with this. Okay. So obviously they're in the vector space. Okay. First question, you want, you want to find the change of coordinates matrix from C to beta. Once we find that, then all we have to do is just take the inverse, right? And that's going to give us the matrix from beta to C, and that's what, and that's what we want for the second part. Okay. Okay, so the way, so the, the typical way to go through this problem um, is to go back and apply the theorem that we just went through. And then there's actually a very easy way to do this problem, okay? So let's go through it the long way, all right? Which is really not too bad, uh, but then that gives you some appreciation for the, um, uh, for the sh kind of the shorter method to do this, okay? All right, so, Applying what we just went through, okay. All right, so we're going to, so concentrating on just the first part, right? Once we get that, then obviously we can just take the inverse, okay? So how do we, so the, so the goal here is to obviously construct our change of coordinates matrix. And then once we have that, we're good. All right, so we have, I'm gonna let, okay? So we have C, right, um, C1, okay, uh, in terms of beta, that is, we're going to denote this by X1 and X2. How do we know it's this? Well, again, we're, right, we're living in R2, okay, basically it's in the plane. And C2, likewise, C2 in terms of, in terms of beta. Okay, we're going to let this be, I'm going to call this y1, y2. All right. Okay. All right, so now, okay, we have b1, b2. Okay. So this represents, this is basically cons, uh, a matrix that consists of, we have column one here and then column two. Right. And we have x1, x2, right? So what this means, okay, is that, so we have, this is consistent of the basis vectors from here operating in this vector. So this is going to change it, right? So this is gonna change this into, uh, and we're gonna call that C1, okay? Right? Because remember, x1 and x2, right? This is what we're letting this be equal to, okay? And so we're working with the basis better, working with beta, right? So that's why these have to be consistent of, from here, okay? Likewise, okay? Okay, um, over here, okay, again, because we're working with beta, right? we have y1, y2, Okay, we're gonna get C2. 
again, this is just basically, you know, what we're, um, what our setup is. Okay, so how do we get, right? So how do we get these? Well, go back and remember from what we did from the first example, right? We have beta, we have beta one and beta two. We have those there. Okay, so beta one, there's beta one, and then for the second one, okay. Right. Um, okay. All right. So let's yeah, let's write this out. And C one is minus three and nine. Over here again. Obviously, we're working with the same matrix here. And this is going to be equal to C2. All right. Okay, so we have basically here what we can do because we're working with the, right, we basically have the same right, coefficient matrix as over here, okay? So what we can do is we can kind of, the idea is we can merge those together. In other words, in math, we call this um, coupling, okay? So we have, a, we have an uncoupled set here, right? So we can actually merge them together, okay? All right, so. All right, so we can put this in augmented form, okay? All right. Let's see. And I think, okay, that is negative seven nights, right? That's like, sometimes I have a hard time reading my own notes. So that should be minus seven. So therefore C1, that should be minus seven, just to be, again, just to be consistent here. Okay. All right, so now everything is fine. So now, okay, in augmented form, okay, Okay, so basically we have this. Okay, so think of this as a system. Right, this is another system, so we can couple them together. Okay, so we have one minus two, uh, negative three and four. All right, that's just this information, and then we have this this vector and this vector. Okay, so that's going to be minus seven. Nine minus five and seven. Okay. Okay. So basically, again, this is taking the system and coupling them together into that augmented form. Now, we probably know what to do from here, right? Very similar. Um, I believe you know, somebody mentioned this in class, but it's very similar to. It is very similar to um, to find us to find it um, to find the. Um, or at least I should say the technique to find the inverse. Okay, so we want to basically can do it REF on this. Okay. So make some space here. All right. By the way, doing the REF on this, think about it. what is what should what should this become? Okay. Okay. What should this become? Well, because we're working with a basis set, right? There's a linearly independent, therefore the first matrix should be an identity matrix. And we only and we know that it should be right. It's 
right? We know this, this has to be the case. Again, it's, we're not gonna get the identity matrix here because of our pivots and because we're working on R2. All right, so um, then the second part we have is five, three and six, four. Okay. So there is, um, there's what we need, okay? It turns out right, so this, okay? Okay, that is basically, um, that's gonna give us, that vector is basically C1 in terms of beta, and this is C2 in terms of beta. If you take a close look, right? Okay, so that's what we want to find, right? So there's, so it turns out that X, so turns out the first column, we have that, and we found the second column. This is what we want to, this is basically what we want to find, right? So this is giving us, basically this gives us a, the change of coordinates matrix from, uh, from C, from this set to this set, okay? All right, okay, so let's write that out here. Okay, there it is. Now, here's the really nice thing. We didn't have to go through all this, actually. Um, again, it is, so it is important to go through this. However, give us kind of some appreciation of how that previous term worked, okay? But the thing is, notice, notice going back up here, okay? Notice this form. Okay. If you look at this and what we're given, right? Notice that this, right? This is C1, right? This is C2, okay? Over here we have B1, and then we have B2. How about that, right? So this tells us whenever, if you have a collection of, if you have basically two sets, right? That are, you have a collection of two sets of bases, Okay, and you want to go from C to beta, then the, then what you do is you create your augmented matrix. And again, when you're going from C to beta, you always go from the basis that you're coming from, you always put them in here. Okay, on this side. I'll put them over here. You're gonna get them, you know, you're gonna get a different result. Okay. You put them over here. So the, so since we're going from C right to beta, you take this, construct your matrix here. And then put your other vectors in this spot, okay? And then you do the REF. So you can, so again, that works because of, because of what we went through here, right? All right, so this is, so you don't need to do all this, right? This is sort of the backbone to why this works, okay? So you just need to do this, okay? And then do the REF, which you can use your calculator for, okay? And then you get your result, okay, right here, okay? So this is going to, so basically the bottom line is that this is going, you take this matrix and multiply it, right? Multiply it by a vector that's living in this basis. And it's going to convert that vector into this basis. Okay. So the next part is uh, relatively easier, right? Because we already have our change of coordinates matrix here. So we want to go from beta to C. So again, all we have to do is take the inverse. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Yep, so, rotation here. All right, that's what we need to find. All right, we need to find the, the inverse of that matrix. Okay, so that's pretty, uh, hopefully that's straightforward, okay? 
Uh, we need to take right one over the determinant. So we have 20 minus 18. That's going to be two. So we're going to have one half. Okay, we switch these around. So four, five, right? And then we have minus six, negative three. Okay. And so we're going to get uh, two. Okay, just as your scalar. So you're going to have two here, minus three halves, minus three, and five halves. And there's, right, there's the result. Okay. Okay. So that is basically the matrix, the change of coordinates matrix that's going to take a vector from that lives in beta and convert it into this one, okay, into C. I hope that's clear. All right, on the exam, um, there will most likely be a problem like this. So again, just you just need to set up this part, okay? And then apply the REF. All right, let's do another example here, okay? Okay. Okay, so this time we're going to look at a collection of uh, polynomials, okay. specifically in P2. Okay. Again, what this is, this is basically a subspace, right? Okay. Or, right, um, sorry, vector space, okay? And it's basically consisting of degree two polynomials or less. All right, so we're gonna let beta, we're gonna let beta be one minus two t plus t squared and three minus let's see five t plus four t squared and two t plus three t squared. Okay. So notice, right? Each one of these polynomials is degree two. Okay. And we want to convert that. Okay. We want to basically take this, right? Find the change of coordinates matrix to convert something from here to, um, to the standard basis. Which we're going to denote as C. So remember the standard basis in P in um, and P2 is just going to be 1, T, and T squared. Okay. Then, okay. Then we're going to, what we're going to do is find, then find the beta coordinate factor. Okay. Or uh, this polynomial. All right. Okay. Great. So we have a basically we have a polynomial and C that's defined defined by the basis in here, and then specifically the standard basis. And so we want to right, we want to convert this right. We want to Basically, the goal here, the ultimate goal is to convert, is to express this in terms of these bases. 
And at the end, I'll show you that we can actually, uh, we can actually um, check our results. Okay. okay. So um, let's go ahead and form our augmented system. Okay. So since we're right, let's, uh, let's do it like this. Um, just to illustrate the idea here, let's go ahead and form. In fact, they, say, they specifically say this actually. Uh, we want to find the change of coordinates matrix from beta to C. So technically, we could, you know, we could find the change of coordinates matrix from C to beta and then go from there. But, um, you know, you know, either one doesn't matter. Okay. So um, we're going to go from, we're going to find the matrix that basically goes from here to here. But then we have to take the inverse, right? Because we're taking something that lives in here and going back into here and to beta. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, okay. All right, since, remember, so we're, okay, we're going from uh, beta to C. So that means, okay, remember what I mentioned a while ago is that if you're going from beta to C, then remember, you're going, you have to go from here to here, right? Okay, so that means this, okay. It's going to be uh, put on this side, okay? And so we're going to express these in terms of a vector, right? And we can do this using that isomorphism property, okay? Okay. Applying the isomorphism property, okay, um, which gets one. Right? So one, this is just, and again, the way we can set this up, we have constant, the coefficient for uh, t, the coefficient for t squared. Okay? So we have one here, zero, zero, um, zero, one, zero, and then zero, zero, one. So again, just reading off the coefficients here. So, right, so this was for one, right? First column, I'll write it this way. So this was for one, okay? This is the, for, for T, right? And then for T squared. So not surprisingly, right? We get the identity matrix, okay? Because we're working with a standard basis here. Yeah, okay. All right, so now let's look at the other one. Okay, so basically this is, okay. So remember, that's what we want to convert to, right? We want to go from, right, we're trying to find the change of coordinates matrix from beta to C. Now let's um, use the isomorphism property um, to write these in terms of our vectors, okay? So the first one, okay, we have one and then minus two and then one, okay? So again, I'm going to, so basically I'm going to number this. This is one, and then we have two here, and then three. So the second one, and be careful because it's it's not written, it's not written in descending order here. Um, okay, so, uh, but still, still figure it out. So we have three, negative five, and then four. Okay. And then finally, we have um, the third one, 2t plus 3, 3 times t squared. So there is no constant there. So 0, 2, 3. And there's our augmented system. Okay. So again, okay. remember the way we got this is just from the coefficients. Okay. So this is coming from the second polynomial, and this is coming from the third polynomial. And again, how do we know, right? How do we know the order? Well, um, okay, you have to, right? So it has to be consistent, right? So you have your, right? This one is for the constant. This row is for the T, coefficient of T. 
coefficient t squared. Okay. All right. And again, right, we're going from beta to C. Kind of a bad beta. All right. So well, maybe we do the REF. Bottom line, it's already in that form. Right? So I'll just use I3 is just this, right? All right. Um, okay. So there is our right. There's our there's, there's our solution. Our, our basically our change of coordinates matrix. Right. Okay. This is just T right going from beta to C. Sure. All right. So now. We need to figure out what is the change of coordinates matrix from C to beta. Why is that? Because we have a, we have a, basically we have a, uh, we have this polynomial that's defined in terms of these basis vectors, and we want to take that and represent in terms of beta. So we need to go the other way. Well, we can do that, right? We just take the inverse of this matrix. All right, let's do that over here. And again, you can use your calculator for this. All right, so the inverse, okay. so P, so going from C to beta um, is basically taking the inverse of this matrix. All right, so that's going to give us minus 23, minus 9, 6, 8, 3, minus 2, minus 3, negative 1, and 1. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, so again, that is right. This is P, right? This is our change of coordinates matrix going from C to B. Okay, so, all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take that matrix and operate on the corresponding vector for this one. Okay, so again, using the isomorphism property, okay. This is going to be minus one, two, and zero. And here's the thing. Whatever, right, whatever convention you used here, for example, we did constants, right, coefficient of t, coefficient t squared. We have to keep it in that same order, all right, to do this one, okay? Okay, so we're back over here. Okay, we're going to take this matrix, a change of coordinates matrix from C, from C to beta and multiply it by that. Multiply it with this vector. In other words, we're going to transform this vector into, into beta. Okay. So for there, we're going to end up getting, um, let's see, five, negative two, and one. So remember, 
that is um, basically that is the that is the vector x in terms of beta. because we're going from C to beta. So those are acting as the weights, right? So therefore, okay, right? The problem says then find the beta coordinate vector for this, okay? So, all right. So we have to, so those, right? These are, these are remember, these is, this is just means your weight, okay? So we can take this now, right? We take this and work with those. So we're gonna get five, So what this is saying, okay, this is basically this. So if we take this polynomial and we can use that to rewrite this polynomial, okay? So, so this becomes five, right? So this is five times this. Okay? Minus two times three minus five T plus four T squared. Move this one. Okay. Plus one times two T plus three T squared. Okay. All right. And straighten this out a little bit here. Kind of, okay. So what this says, again, those are your weights, right? Okay. These values here, right? Five minus two. Okay, and we took, right, we, so we took the first one, multiplied by this, minus two times this, and one times that. So what this is saying is that this is equivalent to this. In fact, we should be able to check our result. Let's go, if you expand this out, you're going to end up getting back this, all right? Okay, so let's check that. Okay, so uh, we get five minus 10 times, uh, uh, minus 10 times t plus five t squared. Uh, minus six plus 10 T plus actually minus eight T squared plus two T plus three T squared. And now, if you see, you get five minus six, that's going to be minus one. Okay. So I'm going to group these together. All right. And then we have uh, minus. Okay. So let's go ahead. Well, actually, Let's simplify now. We have five minus six, okay? That's negative one. Uh, we have minus 10t plus 10t plus 2t. Well, that's that's zero t plus 2t. So we get 2t here. And then we have uh, 5t squared here, okay? Plus 3t squared, that's 8t squared minus 8t squared. So that's zero t squared. All right, and that's basically one minus one plus two t, which is what we expect. So this is a very powerful idea in math. Okay, um, sometimes you know, sometimes we do need to take an expression and write it in a different basis. Okay, and that's exactly what we did here. Okay, we have this. Okay, we change it. We basically took this and expressed it in this form. In, in this in this set. Okay, and so then we can check a result, right? Okay, so, all right. so you can see how this connects to the, right? You can see how this idea connects to what we first said, right? So if you're taking a vector, right? If you're going, so from 4.4, if you have a vector that's living in a standard basis and you convert it to a non-standard basis, then the way you get back is to take that matrix, right? Okay, which consists of the basis vectors in that set, Right, non-standard basis vectors multiply that.
matrix by the vector and it takes you back to the original and to the standard basis. That's exactly what's happening here. You have this, you're converting it to this form, and then you're multiplying, and then you're basically multiplying this, right? You're, multi you're taking these weights and multiplying things out, and it brings you back to the original. Right? So the so the problem was asking for. So again, the problem was this is the solution. Okay. This is what the problem wanted. Okay. This is more of a just basically just a verification to see if we got the right answer. Okay. All right, so again, this is a very useful application of math. In fact, the, in fact, the, um, the composition rule for integration, um, form sometimes a, also known as the U sub rule, um, is pretty much this idea, okay? Um, that's why I tell my calculus two students, okay? It's pretty much, um, it's a change of basis technique, okay? Um, but they're using a very specific substitution to do that. Okay, so all they're doing is changing it to one, taking the function and representing it to a different form. Okay, and the same idea. Okay. All right. Um, so I think that's pretty much the gist of the change of basis section, which is in this textbook is 4.6. All right. And um, there will definitely be a problem like very similar to this. All right. Okay. So I'll go ahead and stop here. All right, and uh, I'll see, I'll see y'all. Um, oh, maybe I'll see some of you on Friday, actually. Okay, and then um, so if you have any questions, um, please send you know please send me an email. Okay, all right, take care.